Thank you so much, Sandra, for <clears throat> having me. Uh, as I said at the very beginning, this is uh, indeed an honor and also a pleasure, also for uh, a specific reason, because what I will present to you are some really brand new ideas. So welcome to my research lab, as it were. Um, <clears throat> and they are um, circling around this basic idea that was that is also on the web page of impact, namely values-based innovation. So it's about values. And right now <clears throat> in our previous discussion, we also centered and had some interesting exchanges about the role of values and what that implies. And we can see how crucial they are, whatever that might mean and apply. And I would like to share with you some of these <clears throat> newest ideas, mostly directed towards uh, sustainability, because I think that's the underlying basic value of the whole program. But uh, I think you can also extend that to other values as I will try to show. Let me <clears throat> briefly uh, share my screen here. Uh, let us jump directly into this issues of sustainability and this um, maybe seemingly odd title, what should I not do? Odd because, um, you might say, isn't it about impact? And you get impact when you do something. And innovation, value creation, these are things where you do something, where you have to do something. And when it comes to sustainability, and if I may <clears throat> say the big words, uh, to save the planet, to fight climate change, but also to fight hunger, to fight starvation, and so many more things, you have to do something. And you have to change the course and do some things differently. Why speaking about what should I not do? Well, I hope I can convince you that this is a kind of complementary uh, perspective that we should also take into consideration because if we don't do so, we may um, maybe do some mistakes that we should not do. <clears throat> well, uh, let me be uh, more specific um, along four, five sentences that I want to share with you. And they also constitute kind of the agenda. So I just uh, walk them through. The first is, I think, rather obvious for all of you, uh, sustainability is a normative value. The second might be a little bit more interesting, namely normative values are not goals. There's an important difference. But what they do is <clears throat> they refer to enabling conditions. The third sentence will be the maintenance of these enabling conditions requires also to not do certain things. The fourth sentence I'd like to show you where the true problem lies, namely to not do certain actions causes opportunity costs, which is especially for companies, but in the sense for everyone, including politicians, but also us as consumers, sometimes really challenging to not do certain things. And I would like to conclude with, uh, say, the ethicist's recommendation here, namely, think investment, not cost. Okay, so let's uh, walk through all these uh, ideas. The first is <clears throat> sustainability is a normative value. And I think I do not need here to reiterate that sustainability is, an, uh, is a value since at least 45 years, since the Brundtland report uh, appeared on the, screen, uh, on the public discourse and indeed initiated until today uh, intense discourse about sustainability. And today, after um, various events of the last years, we see clearer than ever that sustainability is a must. It's also clear for any company nowadays. But what I would like to stress a little bit with the first sentence is sustainability is a value. And the value is basically an orientation for actions, but even more, it's an orientation also for our expectations. What should we, ex we expect from each other? And how do we judge each other? For example, companies, for example, uh, um, non-governmental organizations and also governments, what they do, and as I will show, what they do not do uh, with regard to this value. So, I think, again, this is not really uh, controversial here, but maybe <clears throat> the second sentence might become more interesting. Um, 
usually we think a lot about these things as goals that we would like to realize. Maybe one of the most uh, important examples for that are the Sustainability Development Goals, SDGs. So many values are in public discourse treated as goals, but I think that is wrong because I believe, and again, this is a new finding for me and I'm still elaborating that. Normative values are just not goals. They are different from that. A goal is something that is an intended state that you want to achieve. That's not how values work. Let me give you two or three examples. Health. Health is a value, but health is not a value like a goal where you can say, okay, next Sunday at 11 o'clock, I want to be healthy. And then that is it. The goal would be that you would say, okay, uh, I'm now taking part in this competition and I want to become the regional champion. And then maybe at the end, I've won and I've reached my goal. And then something else takes over. That's the goal. Whereas <clears throat> when it comes to normative values, like health, it is what you would love to be continuously with you. And what you experience is <clears throat> uh, that value that you typically take for granted, at least if you're healthy, that suddenly you realize the value of this value when you experience the opposite. So when you get sick. Peace, which we experience right now very clearly. Peace is something that most, if not all of us, at least I can say so for me, and I'm 60 years old. I've always experienced peace, and I'm a really lucky guy, seemingly. So peace has become for me something like taken for granted. And right now in this situation, I experience and see how valuable peace is. But I see it because the opposite takes place, not here in Berlin, where I stay right now, but nearby, so to speak. So like health, we experience these normative values, especially when we see the opposite, which is definitely different from a goal, right? And you could also say that these values refer to enabling conditions. So if you are healthy, you can do a lot of things which you cannot do if the opposite is present, if you are sick. If you live in peaceful times, you can do a lot of things which you cannot do when there's war. And the same holds true for sustainability. Sustainability means that you have environmental and social and economic conditions that the game can go on and you can focus on the normal game, so to speak, on just <clears throat> buying and selling and producing and consuming and all that. Whereas we all know and can connect with non-sustainable situations, non-sustainable states, that we have real problems, that we have just to see how we can survive even. So uh, in a sustainable state, we are enabled to do many things which we can't do when this value is not present. So normative values are not goals, they refer to enabling conditions. Now, the maintenance of these values, or more precisely here, uh, the enabling conditions, again, take health, take peace, take sustainability. The maintenance of these conditions requires also to not do certain things, namely precisely those that undermine these things. I mean, we see very clearly what undermines peace. Aggression from a war criminal, if I may call Putin like that. Uh, and Janusz, I totally agree with you that this is not acceptable at all, what is done there. Why? Because it undermines one of the most basic values we have, namely peace. And you can also transfer that, although it becomes a bit more blurry and much more complex, to sustainability. If we want to maintain sustainability, we need to avoid those actions which undermine sustainability. Sometimes it's not so clear what that is, and therefore we need research on that. Sometimes it is clear, just to give you one example, which is in my view very obvious, uh, fast fashion, or even more extremely ultra fast fashion, taking place and this is in my view an example of a business model that is definitely uh, not sustainable and that is something we should not do why because it goes against this normative value and the problem so once again <clears throat> these normative values imply 
ethically that we must not do certain things, namely those things which destroy or undermine the values and the enabling conditions. And here comes the problem. To not do these things, namely these things or these actions which undermine the value, to not do these things causes opportunity costs. Just to put it differently, sometimes for some people, individuals, consumers, companies, governments, it may seem to be very attractive to nevertheless do these actions which you must not do. Namely, for example, <clears throat> to start with uh, maybe a rather trivial example, if you want to maintain your health and maybe you have a specific physiological condition that forbids you to eat chocolate cake, then if you want to keep health as your enabling conditions, you must not do certain things, namely eating a chocolate cake. The problem might be that you love chocolate cakes. And that is a problem for you, right? Because you might be tempted to nevertheless, although you might know it's not good for me, that you might nevertheless eat chocolate cake. And you can imagine that this is a true problem for everyone who is addicted to certain things, whatever it is. Namely that <clears throat> there's always the temptation to do certain, certain things which undermine the value of health. Same is true for other things. I don't want to play through with uh, peace. I think you can obviously see how you can play, apply the same things. Um, but you can also apply it to, um, to sustainability. We all see and uh, observe everyday behavior from individuals, from consumers, from, from companies, that they do things which they might know are not sustainable. Still, they go on because not doing that causes opportunity costs. It means the sacrifice of immediate profits or immediate pleasure. And that's the pr precise problem here. What can I say about that as an ethicist? Here's my answer, and you already know it. Think investment, not cost. I'm a business ethicist, so I love to use the um, speech uh, of, um, or the speak of, um, economics and of business administration to say translate ethical ideas, ethical inspirations, ethical demands and requirements into the language of business and economics. And that is what I think about how to deal with normative values. If companies, and you certainly know that most, if not all companies somehow say these days that sustainability is a key value for them, then I would say, okay, let's look and uh, um, look for signals that they really mean what they say, which means that they do not certain things, more precisely that they do not these things, which might give them short cost reductions, which might give them short term profits, quick wins, although they are not sustainable. And that is where you need to invest. So not thinking about, say, possible cost reductions, not thinking in a cost frame, but thinking in an investment frame. If you abstain from certain actions as a company that would give you um, short, um, quick wins, that would give you cost reductions, but nevertheless, you abstain from them, that is an investment. And it's not a classical investment that you can calculate the benefit at the end of the quarter or, or at the, the end of three years period, but it is an investment in the value, in the normative value of sustainability. It's much harder to calculate these investments and that's why I think we really need research on that. We need empirical research on that, but also um, <clears throat> conceptual uh, research on that to understand what then is an appropriate investment for a firm because investment means they must not go bankrupt just by sticking to sustainability. They need to stay competitive. They need to make profits in order, well, to be themselves sustainable. But to weigh the, say, um, economic necessities, the business necessities against the value of sustainability is something we need to understand and to find out what these investments can be and how they can be most professionally be translated into everyday life. 
And with that, I would like to conclude with the kind of <clears throat> summary of sorts, namely what then my summary idea about sustainability is. I would say sustainability means investments in a common future. Many thanks. <laughs>